Okay, let's see if the sound is on. I think, hopefully. Uh, hello, everybody. So, this is Junichi Horikawa, and this is a weekly Houdini live tutorial that I'm doing for a while. And today's topic is to create this. Japanese arabesque tiling pattern using a recursive uh, procedures process so more like a fractal process and then based on inspired from this kind of pattern a traditional uh, Japanese pattern and one of the pattern is called arabesque pattern often used for towels and so on and that's what I'm going to create today using Houdini precisely. All right, let me just show you how it looks like. So there are a bunch of for each loops, and you can precisely control the pattern uh, parameters for the patterns, like the angle of each uh, arabesque also the how twisted each arabesque is how much pattern you want you can also create really more like a really spiral pattern like this as well And you can also randomly create a bunch of pattern, various patterns. And finally, after you've created the whole pattern, you can create the animation from this using the time frame, starting from the zero. Based on the attributes. Uh, which is stored on each primitives on each points so that's what I'm going to create today and um, <clears throat> if you would like to follow using the file you can download the file from the video description on YouTube so if you're interested you can download from there and while it's on line you can download uh, for free and hopefully after the uh, live as well but not sure based on how it went all right so let me just start this tutorial then and it, it's going to be a bit longer than last time because there's going to be a lot of for loop and vex coding so be aware right so let's start by thinking the algorithm how to create this kind of pattern now let me just drop a sketch a basic sketch how it's going to be like so first of all i'm going to create a simple spiral curve like this so this is going to be the basic element that i'm going to use then after creating this um, basic arabesque uh, single pattern, single pattern, then uh, af uh, one thing you want to do is to pick one of the point on top of this curve, so somewhere right here or somewhere right here, or something like that. Maximum two, I guess. And then when I pick up the point, first thing you want to do is to calculate the tangent vector like this and based on this tangent vector you want to copy this single um, pattern like this and that's uh, about it and <coughs> after doing this uh, as an one iterations you want to do the the same iterations over and over in next iterations by picking up 
another point on the newly moved pattern and calculate the tangent vector then create this pattern same as this now there are at some point when when you pick up the point and create the curve uh, there are at some point you have this kind of intersection pattern and when this kind of intersection happens then I would like to create a condition that to remove this curve so that you have a clean uh, final curve as a final result so that's the whole rule <coughs> that I'm going to apply and so pretty simple So let's do this. All right. Okay, let's do this. So let's create a geometry node. Then start by creating a uh, creating a single a arabesque pattern. And as always, I am going to use a attribute wrangle. All right. I guess you could also use this, use like um, <coughs> just a node. Uh, but to have more control, I would prefer using a VEX. And it's not that hard to uh, learn, I think. Right, so let's name this basic element or maybe spiral and let's set this to detail because I just want to calculate once uh, okay hello everybody would be great if you could implement matrices in your tutorial so we learn that too <coughs> I do use some of the matrices, matrices uh, in order to rotate the vectors. If that's good for you, not sure, but let's see. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to set some parameters. I'm going to have, going to need some parameters. One of the parameters that I need is the number of points to create a single curve. So let's name this num. and let's set it to 50 for now and use the for loop to create a number of points and move the set the position of each point so that it looks like a spiral curve so to make the simple spiral curve uh, outline I'm going to start by creating a position, vector position, then create a um, x directional vector first. And then I'm going to rotate this vector one by one at each iterations um, with a different angle. Then, as a result, you'll get the spiral curve. All right, so. For the x value, I'm going to use this i value. Let's divide this by num minus 1 so that the maximum will be 1 and the minimum will be 0 for this calculations. Then multiply by some defined lengths. Maybe you can have another parameter called length. Okay. And let's say zero zero. All right. Like this set it to one. Now, in order to add the point, we need to say add point position. Okay. Now I have a fifty points 
from 0 to 1. So the total length will be 1. Right. Now the next thing I would like to do is to rotate each point use, uh, from this uh, 0, 0, 0 point with a y-axis. For each point, I would like to change the angle as well so that you could create a kind of a twisted curve, meaning a spiral curve. So to do that, I need to rotate each point. So I'm going to create a rotational matrix, starting by creating a identity matrix using ident, then rotate that matrix using an angle. So let's uh, try to define the angle as well. So let's first define the total angle how much I want to rotate the this curve, this line. So I'm gonna name this ang maybe multiply pi by some parameter. Okay, so one, if the angle is one, then it's pi times one, so it's 180 degree. All right, let's try with that. So ang, so this should be the maximum angle. So what I would like to do is to do the same thing as I did here. So divide the angle by float num minus one. Right. Then set the axis rotation axis, which go, which is going to be zero one zero. Is that all? all right. And then finally, rotate the position with this matrix. Now I need to check the. Okay, I think there's not much rotation happened here. Let's see why. Okay, I need to multiply this by i. Yeah, forgot about that. Maybe I will multiply i here and divide by float num uh, subdivide by 1. All right, now I have something here. So total angle, total rotational angle is 180 degrees. If I set this to 2, it should be 360 degrees and so on. Okay, now this is okay but not much control here yet it just give you a like a sp constant spiral curve but doesn't really look like the pattern that I would like for, for the final output which is this arabesque pattern to so to create this kind of curve I think I need to add s some more parameters to this one. All right, hello everybody. So to do that, I am going to add additional equations to this one. I divide by float number negative one that is used for the angle. And this is this equation gives you the number between zero to one and I can, for example, use a power uh, function to this using with some random numbers. I am going to try with two for now, and for as a result, you should also you should always get the result from zero to one as well, even though you use this function but in between numbers will change based on this function all right so now something has changed but doesn't really look good so let's try 0.5 now it looks more like it so i guess the number that i should input here should be in between 0 to 1 so let's create another parameter and let's name this pow Now, by changing this power value, I could kind of control 
the shape of this spiral uh, together by combining those spiral angle and lengths and numbers now number could be fixed like to 50 I guess for those lengths angles and powers I think I could promote it to the global as a global parameter so I let's create a new node with the name controller so that I will I can store all the parameters here to control what I would like to control uh, later on so let's check off for a bit linking parameters from outside the subnet and drag and drop what I would like to control let's also rename this to make it more understandable spiral lengths okay and this one spiral angle spiral angle and spiral power also let's set the range the spiral power from 0 to 1 should be okay spiral angle let's set this to from 0 to 6 or something Spiral lengths 0 to 1, that's fine. Right. Let's see. Okay, now I can control the angle, power, lengths. Alright, looks good. Now let's create a polyline out of this uh, point collections. So that's easy. Just need to use the add node connect with the points and set it to polygon by group and that's all now uh, later on I want to move this curve and move the tip point right here this one to some of the points on top of this curve so the order of this curve should be f uh, starting from this one this point starting from 0 to end of the point but currently since I have created the points from this point the order is reversed so I am going to make flip this curve by using a reverse just to make your life easier and then let's also reorder the point number by using the sort right now you don't see any changes but actually the vertex order has been changed using the reverse but the point number hasn't been changed yet so let's also change the point number as well by using this by vertex order so as a result you should be able to get the point order starting from zero from this point like this now this will make your life easier for sure all right <clears throat> okay now let's also uh, rotate this curve a little bit so that this um, tangent vector at point zero will be uh, aligned with x or y or z direction in this case maybe align with uh, z direction might be better since this looks like this so what I want to do is to just just to rotate this curve a little bit to left so that this 0 to 1 line will align with this Z axis All right sounds simple but I am going to use another point wrangle to do that to align the two vectors there is a neat functions in vex call dihedral so that that's what I'm going to use so first thing I would like to get is the the point position of 0 and the second position the point number 1 position and use those two position to create a vector then uh, convert um, rotate that vector to this z direction so let's first get two 
point position, first one, point zero at number zero. Now let's also make the text a bit bigger so that I can see it better. Like this. It's still a bit too small, but that's okay. Okay, and position two will be a point at number one. So I have now two points. What I want to do now is to create the direction from position one to position two. So I just need to subdivide those two vectors and then normalize the normalize these to make the lengths to one. All right. <clears throat> now let's create the rotational matrix for this vector in order to uh, move this move this vector to Z align with this Z axis. To do that, uh, there is a function called dihedral, dihedral, which will make a make you a rotational matrix from one vector to another vector. So this is the vector that I have just created and the other other vector is 0, 0, 001, which is the Z axis. Now this is the rotational matrix, hopefully. To use this, first thing I would like I need to do is uh, what I'm going to use, uh, what I'm going to do now is to use this rotational matrix to rotate the whole uh, curve. But since I am in the point wrangle right now, what I'm going to do is to rotate each point one by one. And to use the rotational matrix, I need to, I kind of need to set the uh, rotational, um, how do I say, the uh, axis or yeah, rotational center. And currently the rotational center is at zero. So this that is equal to position one, and that is also equal to zero, zero, zero. So I kind of don't need to do anything, but just in case you make it somewhere um, in case that zero isn't placed on zero 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 what you need to do is to first um, move the position point position each point position uh, subdivide by position one which is going to be the rotational axis point point center then rotate the point then after that add up at the point position that you have just subdivided again All right now it works and this should still works even though if you trans if you translate this curve somewhere like here or here this should still rotate correctly like this All right so that looks good maybe I don't need this one because I always want to place this initial curve to be the zero 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 All right okay way to go All right okay now the basic curve has been made let's get into the recursive calculations to create kind of a fractal based um, pattern M more like an L system based curve all right so uh, first of all I'm going to set some group to this primitive let's name this last and I'm only going to use the primitive with this last group to have a new branch so anything without this group anything without this last group I don't I'm not going to create any branch so that you you won't fall into like infinite calculations right that's the purpose now oops let me just save this to somewhere so that I don't lose the process first okay now let's get into the 
um, recursive calculations, what I'm going to use is first a for each loop. And specifically, I'm going to use the for each number so I can specify the number of uh, iterations, fractal iterations. All right, and connect with this one first. Then let's set the number of iterations. It's safer to keep the number low for, f uh, for first try because the fractal calculations tends to be really heavy if you fail at some point and tends to uh, crash your, your file. So I'm going to keep with 2 or 3 for now and raise, raise this up a little bit after, I, after it seems it's successed. Right. And I'm not going to use the merge each iterations, but I'm going to use the feedback each iterations to make it like a recursive calculations. So let's do that. And then go to the for each begin as well. Let's set it to fetch feedback. So this combination will create a for loop, which can be used for recursive calculations. All right. <coughs> Now, first thing I would like to do is to pick up only the group, only the primitive that has the last group attached, or the primitive that is inside this uh, last group. Okay, so I'm just going to use a delete node to define the group that I would like to check, then um, say delete node selected so that I can only select the geometry which is inside the last group. Let's check this. Go into the inspector geometry spreadsheet, go to the primitive, and there you go. There is a group called last. So this is the geometry which has the group called last. Right. Now the what I'm going to do is to first, um, things that I want to do is to pick up one of the point on top of this curve and use this curve to create another branch. So that's basically what I would like to do. And as I uh, show in the sketch, I might would like to um, pick at least two points. So one here maybe and one here maybe. But it might not be uh, clean enough if I pick up the point which is too close to each other which will create a cur one curve like this and one curve like this which if, which will definitely create a self-intersected curve like this one or intersected curve like this one so it might be better to might be better that each two point should be separated enough so that it won't give it won't give you some unnecessary intersections. So my thinking is like this. Um, first, when you have the curve, basic curve like this, split this curve into half, maybe based on the lengths. So this part and this part, and for each splitted curve, pick up the point randomly maybe right here and maybe right here and there are some chances that there still is going to create a intersection but there is going to be less chance than having two points being too close so let's set this kind of rule <clears throat> okay now where I where should I begin um, <clears throat> Let me see. So first of all, let's create a for loop for each number loop. And that has only two iterations. One for the first half of the curve, maybe from the starting point to some half half point somewhere around here. And second loop will be from here to at the end point and at each iteration you want to pick up one of the point on this curve randomly 
but maybe you want you also want to offset from the first point end point from the starting point and end point so you might also want some additional parameters to have an offset from the the edges the edge point All right so think about that and let's uh, create some point starting branching starting point uh, okay so I am going to start with creating a primitive wrangle meaning I'm going to uh, do the calculation for each primitive now if it's for each primitive I think I need one more um, for each loop which is for each primitive node. Okay, let's bring this to the left and let's give another for loop call for each primitive. So there is a chance, currently I only have one primitive, uh, but there is a chance that there is going to be multiple primitives out of this delete node. So, but I want to deal with uh, each primitive one by one in order to find out the random position on the curve so I'm to do that I'm going to use this for each primitive so insert this inside here All right like this and then insert this one again insert this one makes makes it like um nested loop looks already a bit complex but there's going to be one more just to mention okay and since I'm going to use the nested loop and there's I'm go also going to use the random value inside this loop and inside this wrangle uh, let's bring up the meta node meta input node here create the meta input node here for the um, primitive wrangle uh, primitive for each loop and connect this iteration uh, connect this meta node to the second input and I'm going to what I'm going to access is the detail attribute called iterations and I'm going to use that for the random seed specifically and maybe I could also connect this to the third input as well hmm and maybe since I already I also have this fourth input maybe I could also connect this one this um, for each count node which is also a meta node which also has which should also have a detail node called iteration like this one so I could also use this so let's also connect this to the fourth input like this now it is looks complex you might not need to do these all these but just in case to create a um, really random uh, seed for each iterations I'm just doing it like this in some cases you might not need to do this if you choose the right random seed okay now uh, what I'm going to do with this primitive node is to uh, first and uh, choose the branching starting point somewhere on top of this curve and then also calculate the tangent vector so if this is the if this is the point that I have picked up what I want to know is also the tangent vector from this point to the next point it goes like this and use this use that vector as a guide to uh, copy this basic element to this point with the right direction so that's the two uh, basic information that I need to assign uh, that, that I need to find out or that I need to create and I am going to assign it to assign it directly to the to the primitive I guess as a primitive wrangle Let's try to do that. Okay, let's 
set the name of this primitive wrangle to set mm, branch start. Okay, right. Let's open up the code editor. Now, first thing I would like to do is to collect all the information that I want from all those inputs. Second input, third input, and fourth input, which is all, um, which are, which is all about iterations. And also, um, let me just replace this for loop input. I want to set this for loop, which is set as two to the second input. Then this one for each loop, uh, for each primitive loop. A meta node to the third input, and finally the most outside each iterations node meta node to the fourth input. All right, like this, and let's give up. Let's bring up some attributes. Iteration one comes from detail. Second input named as iteration. Let's copy this two times. You have another iterations, another iterations, which is from the third input and fourth input, but with the same name. Okay. And also, I want to bring up the number of iterations for the second input, which is this one, and that is equal to two for now, this one. So I can just create a constant value here but just in case you want to change this later on I would I'm going I'm just going to retrieve the value from this node so number of iterations will be detail second input num iterations right okay <clears throat> Okay, so let's create a initial random value in order to use it for the in order to use to pick up the point on top of this curve. And yeah, let's do this first. So float random value. Let's say r. I'm going to use the random function using those three iteration value to create the random seed. And I'm going to multiply each iterations by some some constant value, some random constant value. You can change that by yourself. Just to make sure that I always have a different values, even if I changed any of the iterations. Like this. And finally, maybe I could also define some random seed by myself, manually change the seed by myself to have more variations. All right, like this. Why? Go back to this node, promote, and you have now a random seed like this. Now let's give this parameter to this node controller so that I can access this later on. Check off this four bit linking parameter. Bring it up here. I'm gonna name this branch seed. Okay. So far, so good. Um, now, by calculating the random function, by using the random functions, I have a value from 0 to 1 right now. And what I want to do next is to use this to uh, determine the point number which is creating, which is constructing this curve. And as you can see, as I have explained, you have two um, iterations, two loop iterations here uh, for each curve. And that is because I want to pick one point from the first point to the middle of this curve. And then middle of the curve to the end point somewhere around here. So 
to do that, <coughs> uh, first I'm going to create the value called offset start for each iterations. And if the number of iterations is zero, meaning the first iterations, then the offset to start is going to be the starting point. If the iteration is two, meaning the second iterations, then the offset starting point should be somewhere around middle, meaning somewhere 0.5. So to calculate that, I need a value, which is this one, iterations, plus a number of iterations here. You just need to com first convert this iterations to float, then divide it by num iterations. So in for this first iteration, this is going to be zero. Second iteration is this going to be 0 0.5, which I need, which I would, which I want it. Now, <clears throat> also let's create the step value for uh, each iterations based on the number of iterations. That this can be calculated directly by dividing one by num iterations. So currently the num iterations is equal to two, so the step value is 0.5. The step value is used together with this offset start. So if the offset starts from zero, then the step value is 0.5, then the range will become from zero to 0 0.5. If the offset start is 0 0.5 and the step value is 0 0.5, then the the range is will going to be 0 0.0.5 to 0 0.5 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 equal to 1 so 0 0.5 to 1.0 so this is the range that I want to create the random point so these are the necessary information to define the range where to create the random point oh, oh thank you very much for the super chat Oh, thank you always. All right now, um, now I have a necessary information: the random value from zero to one and offset values. I want. I am going to uh, recreate or fit a uh, remap this value so that I can use with these values to define the random point position, the random numbers. So first of all, <coughs> uh, I am going to. Um, let's post, let's start by clamping the value. Currently, the value of this random value is in between zero to one. But if the value is equal to zero, then the point, this branching point, will start at this point. If the var if the value r is equal to one, then the branching point will start at this point. And that's not really like a clean um, branching point. We'll just create another uh, mirrored curve like this might be okay but might not be okay so let's try to control this offset from from where you want to start this branching from the starting point or end point so to do that I'm going to use this clamp parameter or clamp function. So first of all, I'm going to set the R and the offset. Let's also create the offset parameter then. Let's also promote this, apply, promote, and currently the value is from 0 to 1. <coughs> that should be okay. Okay, because the R is also between in between zero to one. So <clears throat> let's say the offset is like this. So if the offset is point one, then the minimum value will be always point one. And by sub subdividing R by offset, if the offset is point one, then this one will be point nine meaning the maximum value will always be 0.9, no more than 0.9. Now, <clears throat> there is a chance that offset value will be higher than 0.5, uh, 
meaning this minimum and maximum will flip. So to make sure that this is in between point 0 to point 0.5, I'm going to multiply this by point 0.5, this as well. And then it might be a good idea that I'm going to <clears throat> multiply this by step value, which is this one. So currently this is 0 0.5. Like this. Maybe I don't really need these. Let me think about it. Uh, let me go with this for now. And then now I have the value, cramped value, the cramped random value. Next thing I would like to do is to remap this value so that currently the value is in between point from 0 to 1. Then <coughs> the target value will be offset start to offset start plus step. All right. Like this. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Well, I might not the I might I might not need those uh, multiplications by, uh, multiplied by step, but I'll just go with this if I don't see any errors. Okay. Now that I have value r random value, in order to define the point position. I'm going to, but currently the range of this random value is in between 0 to 0 0.5 if it's on the first half of the curve or 0 0.5 to 1 if it's on the second half of the curve. Now what I actually want is the uh, point number itself which is this value, something like 6 or 8 or 24 or 25 or something like that. To convert those um, fractal value to this uh, integer point number, I need to multiply this r. I'm going to name the integer value as r end index. Then, by multiplying random r by the length, uh, the number of points for each primitive, which can be calculated using lengths of prim points like this. So this is the maximum number of points for each primitive. In this case, you have 50 points. And by multiplying by r, you can, and if the r is in between point, uh, 0 to point 0.5, then you should be able to get the point from 0 in between 0 to 25 by multiplying like this. Maybe you also want to <coughs> use floor or something to make it as an integer. Okay, and for the second loop, you should be able to get the point in between 25 to 50 so using these calculations. All right. Now, now that I have got the uh, point index number, let's uh, store this into a start attribute of the primitive, then also calculate the tangent vector at that point. So to do that, you need to first get the point position at this starting point, which is equal to R end. And let's get the next point position, our end plus one, like this, and calculate the vector from point position one to position two by subdividing those two values and normalize these. Yeah, and that's this is going to be the tangent vector of the curve of the point that you have just picked and so also let's uh, store this as a attribute let's name this direction for now and accept okay I have some errors here let's see what's going what's wrong 
okay this is not our end but should be our index our index our index our index okay now let's check by go into the geometry spreadsheet primitive and see if I have all the information that I need okay so I have the directional attribute and starting value here so the value is starting from 47 which is pretty close to the end so if you want to make it a bit more to the inner I think you can by increasing this value you can kind of offset the position hmm. not too much not much how about this yeah hmm. still not much maybe I don't uh, I might not need this step value multiplication let's see how it goes okay that looks a bit better yeah yeah I guess that's a bit better what if I set it to 1 36 maybe that's good because that's the middle of 25 and 50 okay so yeah I didn't need the step multiplication to the offset the clamp okay I think I also want to promote this uh, parameter to the neural controller so let's do this open up the edit parameter interface and check off for a bit link in parameters then drag and drop this offset to here I'm going to name this branch offset okay so far so good now I have just set the position um, which is currently around here but uh, currently I have set it to a primitive wrangle but if I do the second loop the primitive attribute will be overwritten so I kind of need to store it somewhere different so this that's what I would like to do now and also or maybe at this point I can start by I, I can start uh, rotating this basic element to the point that I have just picked up so currently if the point that I have picked up is equal to 45 then this is the, this is the point right here that I have just picked up and what I want to do is to copy this whole uh, curve starting uh, move this uh, curve and with the basic axis here the 0, 0.0 I want to move this point 0 position to 45 then align the direction of the newly created curve with the tangent vector that I have retrieved which is if the 45 is the curve then 45 to 46 so this way but I guess obviously if I placed if I copy this curve to here there is going to be an intersection here so I would like to avoid that for example so let's change some random seed to avoid that okay now the starting point become became 38 now this should be okay all right so let's try with the starting point 38 okay anything else that I need to consider not for now okay so in order to move the, all those curve um, what I'm going to do is the same process that I did as I did hit here initially using the head roll function in order to align the curve based on two directional uh, vectors So basically what I'm going to do is similar to this one 
and one thing I need to mention is uh, let me draw a sketch here so if I have a curve right here and pick up the point somewhere along here what I want to have is a curve something like this but not like this maybe this could be really beautiful at some point but to make it in the, the rule that I'm going to apply today is is to flip the curving direction which is going clockwise to counterclockwise for the next branch and for the next branch from starting from here the the rotational order will become clockwise again and kind of clockwise clockwise and so on so that's kind of a rule that I want to apply here so let's keep that in mind as well when I do the coding alright okay so give up the space give some space here let's create a point wrangle to move all those point to align with the starting point that I've just picked up from the primitive let's name this set position All right <clears throat> um, let me open up the code editor first okay so what do I need to do here first first thing is first thing I'm like um, basically what I want to do is to move this curve somewhere at this point 38 and align with this uh, tangent vector All right so in order to do that I need to first get the tangent vector of this first uh, point from 0 to 1 which is pretty much equal to uh, z-axis currently but when it gets uh, more complex, the the curve, the base, the base curve should be rotated. It's not going to be equal to z-axis anymore. So uh, let's uh, procedurally get the first point and second point inside that code to get the first tangent vector of this first point. So that is easy. You just need to get the point at number zero get the point at number one like this and then calculate the uh, directional vector like this okay oh. and let's also normalize this make the length one all right now uh, next thing uh, let's bring up let's try to get the point starting point of the primitive that I have picked from the primitive attribute which I have I should have stored inside a primitive attribute if I go to the primitive attribute there is a value called uh, start also the direction here so let's get let's get those two values inside this code. So let's name the uh, starting point position as mm, SPOS, which I'm going to use a primitive and name start at zero since there is going to be one primitive because I'm using primitive wrangle for each primitive uh, for each primitive node so they're always going to be one primitive that I'm working with in inside here so I can always say that I'm just going to get the first primitive value but this is the integer so I need to use this integer to get the actual point position so which is going to be vector oh, no 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 Pre, um, point P 
key like this. Maybe I should save this as an attribute. Maybe I should name this as a start like this. Yeah, this should be more clear. Okay, <coughs> now let's also get the direction, the tangent vector at this point, 38, which I have also stored inside a primitive. So vector, let's name this S direction, is prim zero direction start uh, node zero. All right. <coughs> All right. Should be okay. Okay, now is the time to uh, align the curve, align this curve, copy this curve, uh, move this curve to this 38 with the tangent vector. Right, now first, first thing I'd like to do is to calculate the rotational matrix which should align this 0 to 1 vector with a 38 to 39 vector. So let's create the rotational matrix as I did before using the head roll function. The head roll. So the initial direction should be mm, direction, and the goal direction will be S direction. Okay, so this should give you a matrix, a rotational matrix. Let's try this out. Uh, in order to rotate all those together, first of all, since I'm using a point wrangle, I'm going to first reset the rotational center. The rotational center should be equal to the 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 point number zero. So. And to make make it as a rotational center, I want to bring this uh, position one to zero zero zero. So I want what I want to do is to subdivide all the point position by position one, which is equal to position zero here. Then multiply this position by a rotational matrix in order to rotate and. Let's see how it goes. Now it has been rotated somehow. Is this correct? I am not sure. Now, <clears throat> I also need to do another um, rotation because as I explained in the sketch, I need I need to change the, the rotational order from clockwise to counterclockwise or counterclockwise to clockwise. So in order to do that, I need to kind of uh, flip um, this curve based on this angle, this tangent vector. So how should I do that? Well, this should be easy because currently this is on the 2D plane. So what I need to do is just to just to rotate this curve based on this axis 180 degrees. And as a result, you should be able to get the flipped curve. And as a result, you should be able to get a kind of clockwise uh, rotation or clockwise rotation, which is going to be different from the, the previous conditions. All right, so that means I need to create another rotational matrix. Let's name this MAT2, um, starting with the identity. <coughs> and Rota let's rotate this matrix with a angle which is equal to 180 degrees which is equal to pi and then use the this uh, directional value which is the tangent vector of this curve mm, uh, maybe this one yeah this is the goal tangent vector so this should be the axis that I should that I should use to rotate so rotate like this, rotate the matrix like this, and finally apply this rotational matrix to the point like this. And as I can see, the curve has been flipped and 
the final thing you need to do is to set the position so that the this point zero this point position zero will be attached to a point 38 which is equal to this one so that is pretty easy you just need to since just need to since currently the point zero is on zero 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 position because I have did this process subdividing by position one I just need to add s position which is the starting point position the branching starting point position and by doing this I can move the whole curve and let's see if ha if it has been moved to the correct point, uh, direction let's visualize the initial curve and looks like it is correct so let's check the number so it, it started from the 38 and the curve the curve uh, the curve order has been changed from clock order to clockwise order to kind of clockwise like this all right so that looks good okay so that looks pretty good let's try to leave this loop this first loop here now as a result I am getting two curve um, and that should be on top of this curve yeah looks correct that looks correct okay now what if I leave this primitive loop and it is it still correct I guess so but how come there is four curve created hmm. that's pretty weird I have two primitive here how come let's see why currently I only have one let's try to leave the loop now see how it looks like okay hmm. okay I guess uh, currently let's set the final loop to one to make it sure to make it easier to see okay now I I think this one looks okay because there's only two curve. All right. Okay. Now let's see. Let's see what else I need to do. <clears throat> um, next thing I would like to do is to merge the newly created curve, newly moved curve, with the original curve coming from the input, the for each begin. So that's not much to do you just need to let's connect with null node and this is the original curve that is used to create a this um, new branch and there should be curves that it that have both group last and there should be a bunch of curves that is inside the last group or not so make sure that there is no to make sure that there is going to be no uh, group attached to this um, previous uh, geometry ge uh, curve I'm going to delete the group by using delete group group delete and remove the last group primitive group called last set it to primitive okay now let's well the final one that I have created here this is this is going to be the last um, primitive that I've created and this is going to be the primitive that I want to create another branches for next loop for next iterations for this for each loop so for this one I'm going to I would like to attach the last loop so attach this one 
and combining these two groups together I should be able to have a combined curve like this and making it out as an output and if I increase the iterations I should be able to see those curve like this now as you can see there is a bit of problem here because there's a lot of intersections here so I need to, the next thing I would like to do is to remove the intersected curves to make it a bit more clear to make it more like a pattern more, more like a clean pattern okay so let's go to at some point that there is intersection somewhere around here go back to the loop here maybe around here okay and okay so obviously there is a bit of intersections here so I need to find out <coughs> um, the intersection and if the curve had the newly created curve which is coming out of this loop is being intersected with the previous curves then I would like to remove this newly created curve in order to prevent this really messy uh, tiling pattern All right <clears throat> so let's do that let's do this bring up some space here so this is kind of a reason why it's going to take a bit of time here <coughs> right so I'm going to use this intersection analysis node in order to in order to find out uh, the intersection uh, let's go back a little bit more maybe to two and maybe currently I don't see any intersections so maybe maybe three is better go back to three okay so there are a bunch of problems here one of the problem is that there is a self intersection here out of this um, node and also it should also have some uh, messy intersections with the previous curve which is coming from here like this so I need to consider both intersections self intersections and intersection with previous curves All right so that means I need to find out two types of intersections so let's stop by finding the intersection in between those curve and the previous curve which is this one okay to do that I'm just going to com uh, connect those two curves and as a result I should all I should see the the point which has been found out as an intersected point between the two curves uh, let's also check the input number and primitive number so that as an output for each point you should get some information which curve and which curve has been intersected now there seems to be a too much of intersected points here if I look at it carefully combining those two curves I do see some curves uh, intersection right here which I want to detect but I do also see some intersection which is at the starting point right here and those starting point I, I don't want to detect that as an intersection because that's just a connected branch branching point so to ignore those branching point I am going to uh, temporarily delete the two first points from this curve meaning all the curves starting from this tip point I'm going to de by delaying those two points I should be able to ignore the intersection between 
the curve, the, these curve and the other previous curves, which is at this starting point, and only can focus on those uh, real intersection intersected points, which I should use to uh, determine whether I should delete or not. All right, so let's. Um, should I use? Maybe I can use a primitive. Oops, pr 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 primitive wrangle. Name this delete. Delete starts. Okay, and just want to delete the first point and second point for each primitive. Now, first of all, I need to get the point collection for each primitive. So I'm going to use print points and remove point at PTS zero and remove point at PTS one. And look at carefully if, if I should act if I activate this, the first two point has been deleted. And as a result, the intersected point has become drastically reduced. Right. Okay, if I check it, if I check this curve with this curve, the final intersected curve, intersected point. Does it look correct? Yes, I think it looks correct. So the starting point has been ignored from the intersected point. That is good. Okay. Uh, also, make sure to make sure that there's going to be um, a two close off, uh, two close intersection. Um, I'm going to set the proximity tolerance to really low value. Maybe I don't really need this, but just in case. Right. Now it's the time to determine which um, which primitive from these curve to delete. So if these curve has been intersected with these curve, then any of the curve that is in has an intersection I want to delete. So let's uh, find out which one is which. <clears throat> right. Okay, so to do that, I am going to first create a detail attribute in order to store the number of primitive, what primitive to delete. So I'm going to use the attribute create and create the detail attribute. Let's name this del, del, and integer array. Okay, now this, the process that I'm going to use is not very smart. There might be a better way to do this, so let me know if you know some better way. And also let's also make sure to delete the attribute before uh, creating the new attribute because there's going to be a chance that by going through the loop, the old attributes has been left behind. So to clear up the detail attribute, first I'm going to uh, delete the attribute, then recreate the attribute using attribute create. Okay, let's check. Okay, here it is. Now let's, um, from the point intersected point information which is this one mostly using those values let's find out which ones to delete actually delete right and to do that I am going to use the point wrangle to look through all the po all those point now to explain what those means the source input means is that if the source input is zero, then the geometry is coming from this first input, which is this one. And if the source input is one, then the source, 
the geometry coming from the second input, which is equal to this previous geometry, this one. And the source primitive number is the value uh, indicating the number of primitive in this case if the first intersected point says 1 0 meaning 1 is the primitive number f coming from the source input 0 and 0 is the primitive number coming from the second input so let's check that out if that look if that is the correct value so so for this one the f this is the uh, primitive number 1 right here and if I go back here this is the 0 uh, for the previous geometry which is coming from the second input and it says that the first primitive from the left one and this, uh, this first geometry first uh, value 0 from the second input is intersected and let's see if that's true um yeah there is an intersection bit right here so the information seems correct so that means i can use this information in order to determine which one to delete so anything that is listed on the left side should be deleted in this case so in this case one three five six seven two one seven two six all those all those numbers some of are duplicated but those primitive numbers should be deleted in order to um, prevent the intersection between this one and this one so that is pretty easy to uh, know let's use the point wrangle to gather all those information what primitive number to delete and store that to the delete array inside detail attribute and later on I'm gonna use that to actually delete those all right uh, first of all I'm going to access this two parameters uh, two attributes from the um, analysis intersection analysis so source input and source prim So first of all, source input, which is the integer array, i at source input. Second one, let's name this indexes, i prim uh, source prim. Okay. Now let's look through all the S input and I just need to know the value from the input 0 which is the left hand side which is this one, the first input. So look through all the input like this and get the input value and I'm only going to check if the input is equal to 0 so if input is equal to 0 which means it's coming from the left hand um, first input then um, retrieve the um, retrieve um, maybe just uh, retrieve the uh, source primitive index which is equal to this one so that can be retrieved by accessing to uh, prim equal to indexes um, i yeah should be correct okay 
now so this is the primitive number that I want to delete and I am going to set this primitive number to the detail attribute using set detail attrib del index um, prim and since I'm going to I would like to append to the array I'm going to use the append option okay let's see let's see the result going to the detail all right so now I have those list of numbers that should be deleted and there are some duplicate numbers but that doesn't really matter All right. Okay. Now let's. The next thing I'd like to know is the self intersection. Which one is self intersected? So go back to the output curve. As I can see, these two curves and these two curves have self intersected. Self intersected, like these. And for those curves, I just want to delete. All those all those mm -hmm. two curves so if it of if those two curves has been intersected together then I'm just going to delete two of them right away this one as well so being left with this curve this these four curves so to calculate the self intersection you use the same intersection analysis but you just input the first one and that's all you need and you can calculate the self intersection going to the point wrangle a point attribute you let's also promote those source input and source primitive and you also have to use to information <coughs> and these are the four um, numbers that you want to delete in this case so currently the source input is zero zero meaning the first one first input and second input kind of be the same using just the first input in order to calculate the intersection and as a result in total you should be able to have a four um, types of numbers currently because as you were as you so in the image, as you saw in this um, image, you ha you saw that four curves has been intersected together. So the result is showing you the same result. Six, two, and four, five is the intersected curve. So those are the numbers that I want to delete here. Okay, right. So so bring this up a bit beneath and add up let's add up the delete uh, integer array with with those two um, with those values that I want to delete okay <clears throat> and for that I am going to um, use detail wrangle starting with the attribute wrangle connect those two together and set it to detail and access to all the points from the second input which you can do this so this I guess since there are duplicate numbers that I'm going to store inside the delete node that's the reason why I said that might not be too effect effective if you know the better way to deal with this kind of problem and let me know I will be really appreciated okay let's also get the primitives source primitive values from all those point from the second input source prim at i and for each primitive value the primitive values at n set detail attribute delete prim append and as a result uh, 
append. Okay, as a result, you should be able to uh, apply a self-intersected primitive number as well. So there are a lot of duplicate values here. Well, doesn't really matter. Okay, now I have got all the values that I need, all the values that I need in order to delete the necessary primitives. What I would like to do is to say maybe use the primitive wrangle in order to delete what I need to delete. Let's connect this to here. Okay, let's also rename some of the wrangle because right now it doesn't really make sense. Okay, so for this one, what was this? Hmm. Uh, inter intersection del and this one is self intersection del okay and this is the actual delete okay right now this is the time to first let's get the integer um, array from the detail from the second input called L and what I would like to do is to check if there is a primitive number is stored the current primitive number is stored inside this del so I think I can just use a find and this is the array and this is the primitive number that I want to find out and if the find is larger than zero meaning if you find out the primitive number inside this delete then just delete yourself remove prim prim number including the points All right so now you are left with one curve well that's pretty sad Okay, <clears throat> now, all right, let's bring this about, bring this a bit lower. And at this point, I am going to, let's see if there are unnecessary information applied here. So there is a direction start. Okay, I might not I might want to delete the group called start here. I'm gonna explain why later. Okay, name this um, last but I'm recreating the group last here. But I'm gonna explain why. Okay, let's see but at this point I should be able to implement it the uh, intersection removing the intersected curves so let's check that out okay so this is the third iterations fourth iterations fifth and even if I increase the iterations I don't see any intersected curves so I think that is successful but okay I see some problems here there's a um, lost uh, first curve that is because I have used this one to delete the primitives that was wrong I need to replace this with the original curve here okay now that's better okay now almost done almost done but there's one more thing that I would like to implement here if your time is okay. Uh, that is, if I increase the iterations like this, at some point the calculation just stops currently. Maybe at, in this case, at 12, 11 to 12. Right? That is because there are some point that you 
all the all the curves has been deleted with this intersection checking function and meaning all those curves that is that has been created from the uh, branch branching point has has some kind of intersection meaning you you are left with zero curves and that is the point where you don't have any more you don't have a no more uh, growth grow uh, growing curves uh, growing branches to prevent that you you could kind of uh, change kind of this kind of uh, random seed to check each um, value to find out the best value but at some <coughs> seed there is a chance that nothing will happen as well in this case maybe the intersected curve intersected curve has been created from from the first iterations and that is kind of a problematic if you want to like infinitely grow the this kind of branching curve or arabesque branches so to avoid that i'm going to create another for loop to uh, fail safe the um, <coughs> this iterations this fractal iterations meaning what i'm going to do now is to first try out this whole setup uh, st starting from picking up the last node uh, last uh, the primitive with the last group then creating find out some starting point on top of this curve then move that move the element to that point then finding out the intersection and if all those if you have done all those setups and if you find no curves as an output then redo this setup using different random seed until you get at least one or two branches and if you have at least one branch then you can keep going with the iterative loops you can kind of uh, create a growth for this uh, fractal iterations so that's what i'm going to do for the last setup i'm going to create another loop in order to check if there's going to if there's going to be a empty curve created or not if it if the curve has been created not no curves has been created after this setup then redo the whole setup using the different random seed so and as soon as you get at least one or two then just leave that loop and that's what I'm going to do so another another type of loop here which i'm going to use is for each number and i kind of need to set up set the maximum value how much you want to try out the different um different uh random seed values if you try it too much you might get into the infinite loop so let's at least let's um, keep it to maximum 10 or something but changing 10 changing the random seed 10 times will give you a big chance to create at least one branches at some point so that should be okay but there is a small chance that even though you have random values so much there is a small chance that it, well, it's going to stop, but it's going to be much less than the current setup, so it should be okay. should be much better. All right, so I am going to place this in between, say, from delete, right around here. and until around here so i'm going to insert the loop in between 
this delete uh, and after this delete and before this group create okay so let's keep this to one for now so that I won't get into a some weird loop okay connect this like this okay and bring this up and connect it right here so what's important here is the when to end the loop so I need to set up kind of a set up the condition which is equal to this one stop condition so this condition should be activated when the output which is this one is the number of output is equal to one or more than one <coughs> All right. so let's do that I am first going to connect this uh, last node with some new node with the name that I that is easy to access so um, say branch branch out right and I am also going to create a switch node connect with branch node uh, branch out then connect this late node here All right this and currently the loop uh, is set as merge age iterations but I'm going to change this to feedback age iterations so that I can I'm going to reuse every time the loop has been um, loop didn't get any uh, recursive uh, loop didn't give you any branches so the condition that I want to use for the each uh, for each I mean the switch uh, node is to check whether the output number is zero or not okay now this for this uh, for each begin for I'm going to set as feedback fetch feedback so that the newly created loop will be also a recursive loop All right now okay let's bring this up to the left okay so this for each uh, uh, for this switch node I need to set up the conditions now the first thing I would like to do I need to check the number of primitives out of this branch out okay so in prim and prims branch out if it's more than zero then choose this one as an output if it's less than zero or equal to zero or less than that then just use this one and do the loop again so if the branch out if you didn't if because of the intersected checking if you have a zero output from the from this branch out then redo this loop go back to this loop using this delete nodes as an output uh, as an uh, initial input again by using this switch node All right and at each loop I know I would like to change the uh, random iterations so I kind of a need to use um, this iteration, this uh, meta node, as this iteration value as um, as a random value, random seed value. So, but currently, and I think I need to connect somewhere at this uh, node. But I currently all those value has been stored. Uh, all those uh, input has been used 
by those three meta node. So I kind of need to kind of replace those with this one, or maybe add up with using some additional wrangle. So, but for now I'm gonna make it make it simple. I'm going to replace the second bits is necessary. The last uh, meta node is also kind of important, so I I think I would imp replace this one. This is the primitive wrangle meta node, so I'm going to replace this with this value, right? Now, the setup is almost done. What I just need is to ch uh, set the stop condition here checking whether the output is output number is equal to zero or not uh, more than zero or not all right <clears throat> so let's do this um, if n prims gen uh, wait Well, the problem with this condition is that if I use the condition using the number out here, like branch out, it just the the loop just stops at this point. If you find out that this branch is more than if this branch out contains more than one primitive, more than one primitive, then and if I write the condition like that here then the loop just stops here as and as a result it, you will get a zero output out of this loop so that is kind of a problem so what I would like to do is to wait until the one iteration finishes and then check the conditions then if the if you find out that there is a more than one geometry one curves then try to um, leave the loop so meaning let's say you f you have two geometries out of this branches and using the switch uh, since you have more than two here more than zero here the the geometry output from this uh, switch will be this one and the first will be ended and this geometry will be feedbacked to the first input right here right this point and trying to redo the calculation using that geometry but at this point by checking the condition whether this geometry is having more than two more than one more than zero or not using this condition right here and if you stop the iterations at this point, then what you get is the last um, output that is connected from this to here. So what you're going to get is the, um, the geometry that is just right before going through the feedback. And that's how you're going to, and that's how you need to use the stop condition is a bit um, which is a bit complex to think about but that's the way it works in Houdini I guess so to check that I'm going to uh, tr um, create another null node here so that I can access it easier with some name here it's named as gen uh, meaning generated geometry or something All right. and then go back to the stop condition here at the for each end right and let's create the stop condition m prims gen is equal uh, more than zero but there is a chance I mean even if I have even if this one has been feedback looped this is also going to be stored in gen so that is the number of this one is also more than zero so I need to have one more condition in order to check that 
um, the this one is different than the initial delete geometry the ge geometry that is coming from delete and that is that can be determined by the group last so that's the reason why I have set the group delete here so every branching out geometry has been um, removed from this last group but this delete this geometry coming from this delete node is always having always in, inside the last group so you can check that that if the geometry inside the gen is not inside the last group then that's the output that we want to use if it's not then that is equal to this one so if it's inside the last group then that is equal to this one so you want to keep keep the loop uh, calculations to find out until it gives you at least one output <coughs> okay I guess too much explanation uh, let's do this so additional conditions if prim group at gen go last is equal to zero meaning the number of primitives that is inside this last group is zero that is the condition we want to stop this loop right and that's the that's the condition where you find out that there's a um, there's a curve uh, being left out even though after the intersection checking okay now let's leave up leave to the last loop and currently I have set the increment the iterations for this uh, safety loop to 1 but let's set it to 10 and by doing it if I increase the iterations I can keep having the iterations I can keep grow the this kind of pattern without any stops because you have just made the safety net here All right that was long that was really long but almost there almost there let's have some additional parameter here in order to have in order to give the number of iterations so give an integer somewhere around here <clears throat> names it iterations from 0 to uh, say 40 or 30 copy this parameter paste it right here okay almost there <laughs> well it's been it's been almost two hours but I guess a lot of ha a lot of you guys has been left but sorry for that okay now for the final step I would like to create a procedure animation out of this output so starting from the first curve um, create an animation that it looks like it's growing from the first cur uh, first branch to the second branch to the third branch and so on and that's the final step that I would like to do so it did look like the generative animation but actually it's it's kind of a reverse engineering you first have this final result then create animation out of this result so that's the step that I'm going to do now which is kind of a fake but who cares all right <coughs> to do that I am um, I would like to have an addi additional information to each primitive which is the order of the growth uh, which is equal to the number of iterations when did it create it so I can s uh, add that information inside this loop just right after maybe creating the last group here 
So let's create a primitive wrangle. And I'm just going to attach a value iterations from the this one. This is the the most outside loops meta node and there inside a detail node you have an iterations and starting from zero to twenty. Okay, so connect this to the second input of this primitive wrangle and this name this set iterations and uh, let's get the iteration first from the detail detail second input like this and just bring up this iterations to the primitive attribute integer attribute okay check let's check so you have a integer attribute called 8 a and if you leave the loop you have an uh, attribute called 8 a starting from 0 to 20 in this case which is the number of iterations all right so I'm going to use those as a order of the growth so starting from 0 and end at 20 uh, right, and maybe I can also colorize those curves based on those iterations as well if you want. Okay, now before doing the colorization, let's just create an animation, animation, and let's end this tutorial, which became a bit too long. Okay, let's, what I'm going to do is to use the primitive wrangle okay and I'm going to use the frame value which is around under here currently I have set it from 1 to 240 and I'm going to procedurally um, create an animation based on those frame start value and two frame end value so I kind of need to get those two values a current frame value and the end frame value so let's get that first so the current frame can be retrieved by accessing to the global attribute like this and I am I think this is an integer but I'm converting it to float for now that's uh, much easier to use in this case and I also am going to retrieve the frame end value um, which I don't think there is a global attribute for this one so I'm going to first promote the parameter like this and set the expression like this so that I can access to this frame end and then transfer it into the VEX code right and let's also retrieve the iteration value which is the which is equal to the loop number of iterations for this loop so I'm going to create a, a um, integer parameter max iterations and I think I can just copy this then paste it right here. All right. <clears throat> now, let's uh, think about um, algorithm. How to create the animation? Now, say this is the first iterations. Say zero. This is the second one. This is two. Three. And as an animation, what I would like to create is something like this. Starting from the tip point of curve 0, like this. After, cre after cr creating the, all those curves, I want to start from this branch and then start creating the second branch and then third branch and fourth branch. 
and maybe if the timeline goes like this from 0 to F end then the duration of each curve's um, creation is if you have the total of four iterations the the <coughs> the timeline also will also be divided into four so from zero to four divided by f end four to f end four three f end and during this period i would i'm going i would like to create this uh, curve at this point or like this curve and so on so that's the basic concept that I would like to follow in order to create a procedural animation. Let's do that. All right. So <clears throat> to do that, um, I'm going to first calculate the step value, which is going to be the step um, timeline value. And I'm going to divide this Fn, which currently is equal to 240, divided by the number of iterations. So this step value will be the frame. Maybe if it's 20, so it's something like 12 or something. Maybe 12. So in between 0 to 12, that is the part the first iteration curve is going to be created. And from 12 to 24, that's the second iterations curve being created, and so on. So this is the step value that is, that's going to be used. And um, <coughs> let's also calculate the value S, which is a current frame divided by a step value. So this is going to be the starting frame, maybe by making a floor, making an integer. This is going to be the starting iterations of the that curve at a specific frame. So if it's in between 1 to 12, and if it's divided by step value 12, then that is um, in between 0 to 1 and if, uh, if you make it a floor then that is should that should be 0 if it's 0 in between 0 to 11 and if it's in between 12 to 23 then the value this value will be 2 and so on so this is always in between 0 to this maximum integer and maximum iterations All right. And this value is going to be used in order to just draw everything in between 0 to this S value. So if it's around like 99 or something, and if you uh, divide this by uh, 12, then if, if the value is 8 or something, then <clears throat> from the, the value, the, the curve that is in between 0 to 8 iterations, will all be drawn without any anima animations and the value that is going to be after the S will be animated <coughs> I don't know if that makes sense but and to do that I need one more additional uh, numbers that is a fraction number which can be calculated by calculating the modulus uh, between F frame current frame and step so as a result you should be able to get the value in between 0 to 12 in this case and dividing this by step again will give you a value between 0 to 1 all right all right I think I hope it makes sense now <clears throat> if the iteration current iterations the current primitive iterations is more than s then I just want to delete the whole curve like 
just oops we may think I need one more parameter here okay let's see the difference so if I play it you can see that um, a block of primitives have been um, generated at by each 12 frame I think like this so that is close but that's not really beautiful yet <clears throat> um, to make it more like a generative animations to make it more like um, growth animations uh, next thing I would like to do is to control the point um, deletion based on this fraction of value here so else if mm, I iteration is equal to s so say if the iterations in bit is a bit is in between 12 to 23 that means the iterations is currently at 1 I think yeah and so that that is the case here <clears throat> so if the iteration is equal to 1 then this is the place where you want to control the uh, number of points to show up in the display based on this frame number which is currently converted into fraction value in, from 0 to 1 if it's 0 that is <coughs> the that should be the that should be the starting um, that shouldn't show any uh, branches right here but as the fraction value increases the whole um, curve should try to appear one by one by creating by showing the connecting point one by one based on this value so if it's equal to one then all the curves will be shown all right let's do this so first of all I'm going to retrieve all the points from this primitive then loop through Uh, starting from the since what I'm going to do is deleting the point because all the curves is shown right now like this so it's kind of a reverse engineering as I said what I need to do is to check up the fraction point and if the current frame is right here then what I want to do is to delete those point then by increasing the frame the point should appear one by one. So uh, the floor, the loop should start from the fraction value, but being converted into a point number as well. So the fraction value currently is from zero to one, and by multiplying it by the length of the number of points for each primitive, you should be able to get the first point position which is somewhere current here if you want to delete those curves at uh, those point then from there you can look through all the points then add up the integer by one then remove point at this point all right let's see how it goes Okay, showing this. Play it. Alright, I think it's kind of working. Now I do see some problem around here. Sometimes it just shows up before I go to get it into the next step. I think I need to fix some of the stop right here mm. uh, let's see what I what can I do for that mm. maybe I could do the additional calculation for the fraction Nope. 
it's this. Nope. Does it work? Yeah, maybe. This is a bit a uh, bit of brute force method, but maybe this works. Yeah, a bit better. Yep, 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 yep. All right now we are almost ready. The animation has been made. Now it's time to maybe do some options here, like colorization or something. Um, in order to colorize the curves based on the iterations, you just uh, what I'm going to do is to do use the attribute promote to promote the <coughs> promote the primitive iterations to the point so that I can change the point colors. Don't delete the original. And use the color node. Oops. Uh, constant to ramp from attribute. Then using iterations. And the range is between 0 to this value, obviously. Iterations. Right. And then set the color, any color you want maybe starting from red to and that blue have some yellow at middle mm. right and maybe if you want to mix a bit color a bit more then you can apply like attribute blur to smooth in based on the position it's not this CD I want to change the CD proximity more points uh, does it does it give you any changes not sure maybe maybe yeah. All right. Doesn't really matter. Okay. And finally, if I if you want to make it like as um like a geometry like um meshes, what I would do, I would use BDV from particles. Currently, that is too thick. Um Let's set the radius size to 0.1 and also set the voxel size to 0 0.05. Right, and then BDV convert to convert it into mesh again. Polygon. Then transfer the color using attribute transfer. this and let's hide the edges and let's set the material color to a bit brighter all right looks good and if I play it neat mm. yeah that's pretty much it <clears throat> so this is the pattern that I wanted to create that I wanted to show and no intersections animate it and well with some parameters you have some weird spaces like these or like these but still I find it interesting okay let's try out other parameters Uh, so I have a bunch of parameters here. By changing those parameters, I should be able to change a whole outlook, but without any intersections, actual intersections. Looks like um tree 
at some point. Yeah. You have more curly, you can have more curly spirals like this. Yeah. It's pretty playful, I think. might be too much curly yeah something around here might be good for me all right and you can also control the branch offset branch seed random seed Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, I hope you liked the result. Uh, that was really long um, explanation that I did today, but everything is kind of essential uh, in order to do the algorithmic design, I think. So um, hopefully you find it something um, helpful here and let me know if you have any questions or not if not I would like to end here and as always you can go to the YouTube video description to download the file <coughs> uh, it's free to use just use with any of your use case it's pretty fine <coughs> and yeah, if any comment is welcome. Right. So, and as always, thank you very much for watching it on real time. It's really, I'm really appreciate it <coughs> having you all watching this. So as I said, this is not really like a real generative um, design, but it's more like a faking animation, but still find it interesting oh um thank you very much for the super chat packer and um amandas amanson right so if you have no questions here i would like to end the uh, live here um if that's fine let me just save this and there is a file already uploaded but I think I'm going to upload this uh, file that I've created on live as well uh, since some of the code has been changed a bit not much but just a bit right Okay, so thank you very much and I'm planning to do the live tutorial next week again at the same time 9 p.m. Japan time <clears throat> so if you're interested please consider joining All right thank you and good night <laughs>